Okay, first let's uh, execute this snippet. It's going to send this to uh, the ESP one by one. And then when it's done, it should display the bitmap of one, which is actually a zero. That's what this one here. So if we change this to like, I don't know, an eight, that should display a seven. Execute that. And there it is. So this code uh, basically allows you to send these little bitmap patterns right here. That's pattern for a zero, one, a two, three, etc. And then uh, it sends these bits into the uh, shift out routine up here, which will convert it. But even more fun actually is instead of doing it one by one like this, this small snippet of code right here is actually a web server. I just can't believe it. Okay, so let's ex execute that. And when it's done, we have a web server at that IP address. So if we open a browser over here at that IP address and I do a refresh, watch this, that's a zero. And if we change the number, refresh. And so basically this could be done by a uh, um, jQuery page or some other, you know, really nice UI that basically sends that query to uh, control whatever you want over here. It doesn't have to be a certain segment display. So I thought this was pretty cool. So let's uh, see how it works. Um, let's see. Let's uh, start with the uh, review of the. Uh, shift register here this is a chip i use that's that little chip right there and uh, long story short it takes the data serially one one bit at a time and and kind of like caches it and pushes it serially that's why it's called a shift register into shift it one by one into this register and by the time you have all eight of them you can say okay i'm ready then it will actually instantly flip those uh, well, actually, be, be easier to display. Oh, yeah, this one here. This is a good. Uh, it's a good diagram. So, these are the outputs, and those are basically latches. And this is the uh, shift register itself. That the data coming in in here from the serial. And I, this is what they call it SER. I call it data. And it you just push the data in here, and then each time the clock, which is which one is the clock? This clock. This is the clock. So every time this one, uh, I can't remember whether it goes up from low to high or high to low, whenever that transition, it will take whatever is in the serial and then it shifts it one at a time down here. And then finally, there's this guy right here, the RCLK, which I call latch. When you're ready with the data that is in here, you flip this one and then boom, all the eight, of eight all those eight bits that you've been shifting will be uh, displayed onto whatever you have connected in my case these guys here are connected through these resistors from here to these resistors onto this display that's the gist of how the shift register works so let's look at how the lua code actually works uh, yeah i just put this in here as a reminder to myself that you know before you can run the the server code you have to have this set up first so that will be your ex uh, access point name and your password there and without that just make sure that you do this make sure you have an IP address and if you don't have this set up yet um, you'll get a null I think now it used to be zero zero but now I think it's a null so let's look at this for those of you who program with Arduino that should be very familiar you define a variable that says which pin does what so those pins correspond to these pins right here that I mentioned earlier on the uh, actually do I have that right here these three pins correspond to the latch, the data, and the clock right here. Those are the pins that we are defining over here. And those are connected to the Lua. These are the Lua 0, zero 1, 2. Notice it's not sequential. And then it goes to here. So that's what we're defining right here. And then uh, you say that all those pins are output pins, so we could actually control them. And then we set them all to low. 
and then this is the function that actually basically do the I think they call it bit banging you bang it one one bit at a time to the output instead of uh, um, using hardware we're doing this using software so the first parameter of that function is the data pin that we're going to shift this in the second one is of course the clock that we're going to use and then the latch pin and finally this is a string uh, currently no MCU doesn't have uh, bit operations zero day is uh, asking for uh, feedback as to how important it is he said it's going to cost 400 bytes so I'm not sure where I stand on that yet uh, so currently because we don't have it I use string function so I pass in a string and then I simply uh, use a string sub to look at those particular index within the character of that string so there will be eight characters one through eight and so I just look at from whatever bit so if it is the, this one is if the for loop is one this will be one to one um, if it's just two is two 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 so and so on and so forth so the first thing we do basically like I said we need to uh, um, set the latch such that we tell the shift register don't pay attention to whatever we're doing right now so that's what that that does by setting the latch pin low and then we set the clock saying that we are about to send some data so that's low so it's basically preparing for it to get high to uh, set this high right here so depending on whether or not it is a zero or a one at that particular bit location within this eight one through eight we will either set that uh, data pin high or that data pin low and so depending on that bit pattern that we pass in here which is these guys right here and then uh, once we set the data pin correctly then we say okay clock now tick and then that will take whatever we set in here whether it's low or high and sets it into one of those registers we saw earlier and then finally when we get all eight of them so this is the loop for all eight when we get all eight of them we say okay now transfer all eight of those whatever those patterns were into the output and that's that so that's a function and then these are just the constants which is an array of 10 bit patterns so that's uh you know the, the each of these like this the, this first one here is that segment right there and then the next uh character is that segment there and so on and so forth and so i just look at the led and i start typing um, pretending that i'm setting those bits and that's what these eyes are and then uh, when you want to pick one of these elements you say what element yeah it just doesn't have, even have to be a variable i think that's left over from my when i was doing a loop cycling through all the digits so i could put a number in here let's say a six which will be the, f the sixth element but because this one is a zero then uh, that's why it's uh, actually off by one. Oh, that simply prints it that doesn't actually uh, set sense it so yeah that that shows you the the bit pattern for the uh, sixth element which is a number five so if we put a six in here and execute that then it's a five because like I said this is zero so if you do one here it'll be a zero okay so now for the fun, fun part is the server so to create a web server you just say create a server and give it a variable name and then once you get a variable then you can actually execute methods within that server start listening on that server at this port 80 is the default so if you don't specify in a browser over here that's 80 colon 80 and then uh, whenever there is something coming in on port 80 on this server on the ESP uh, Wi-Fi module call this function and that function is defining what it should do when it re when when something happened so that's the beginning of the function and this is the end of that function and within that function there are two things when we receive some data call this function so that's gonna nest it there and then when uh, 
uh, we've, we are done sending the data, close the connection. So, but this is where the fun part is. So when the web browser uh, goes to that URL, which is this, the ESP, and sends this, basically the, uh, the parameters right there, that parameter uh, is going to be part of this payload. I think there's an HTTP colon something something in front of it. That's why uh, I skip. Actually, we we could be we could see that. So let's do that. Let's print um, somewhere over here. As soon as we receive something, let's print that. Print. Pay. Oops, I don't want uppercase. Lua is case sensitive. Print. Payload. So let's see what actually comes in. So I'm going to have to actually restart this because I can't start two servers. So I'm going to start another server. Oh, I also lost this, so I better execute this. So we'll execute this, because since we restart, we lost everything that's in memory. Uh, if this is a real program, you would actually save this as a file within the uh, ESP, and then you could execute that file, so that way you don't have to keep on doing what I just did. But, so let's execute that and see what we actually see in the payload. I think there's an HTTP something in front of that. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I'm actually going to refresh. It. Let's do a, a three. Okay, so I'm going to refresh this and we'll see what we actually get. So we actually got two requests. We get the get, get dig and then the browser also wants a favorite icon from our website. Our website that lives right there. <laughs> But I don't have a favorite icon, of course. But anyway, so that's what it sends. And that's why it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's why this is six. So I say go grab the sixth character to the eighth character, which is these guys right here. I'm sorry, these guys right here. Hello. So that's six, seven, eight character. And if it is dig, then we do something. I plan on doing other things like, you know, uh, setting other LEDs or checking other ports or whatever. So that's why this is, it's not really truly necessary for just this experiment. Anyway, but this is the key why uh, my code didn't work before. Lua has a nice quote unquote feature. <laughs> you can't see my air quotes. Um, that it tries to figure out whether some variable is a string or a number. And it was getting all confused because these look like a number, but I want to treat them as a string. As you remember, within our uh, function, we did the uh, sub over here. So when I pass in, let's say I pass in this digit here, one, one, blah, 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 it thinks it's, you know, I don't know, 11,000, whatever. It's not the actual string, one, 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 zero, zero, like this. So by the time it hits here, it was just erroring out and that's why it didn't work. But by taking the, after we do the substring over here, even though it's a single digit, I have to tell it that it's actually a number because I want this to be able to become the index for digits because I guess it doesn't like you doing a, 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 an index on, um, on an array with a string in here. So I guess this is not like a, a .NET collection. So it's, it's C. So this has to be an actual number. So that's what that is for. And then, like I said earlier, by the time we get the digit out of the, uh, of the array here, I have to tell it that even though it looked like a number, um, even though it looked like a number, it is actually a string. So I put this string over here, pass it over here, and the shift out, of course, is that routine up there. And now this would succeed. And that's about it. So it goes in here. You do the latching like we saw earlier. It calls, uh, eventually calls the, uh, I mean, uh, eventually that spits out the number over here. We're not printing anything. We're actually shifting the bits and latching it. And then after we got all done with that, then I actually uh, need to send a reply to the browser, otherwise the browser over here will time out saying, oh, that website is dead. <laughs> so that's what this is uh, being built. So whatever we put in here, so we build a string that we want. It's 
doesn't really matter what it is as long as it is a valid HTTP reply. So these are important, but what we say over here is not important. So we uh, tell it that it is a, an okay that it succeeded. We have to tell it how long we're about to send the reply and uh, that we want him to cl close the connection because we're closing our connection here too. So that's, that's everything line by line. If you guys have any questions, uh, send uh, me a comment or whatever. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the people on the internet, uh, Note, Note MCU for creating such an awesome firmware, Zero Day for being so responsive, uh, Pete Scargill for uh, sharing all his findings, and uh, Marcus uh, Gritz, I, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Marcus, uh, for some of the tips, which I actually haven't used in here yet, but he has this cool tip that by not doing the the constants here, like the GPIO load, just put zero in here, that actually speed things up. And by putting this GPIO right in a variable, that also speed things up. So this could go much faster. So everybody's sharing stuff. I really like that. So hopefully uh, you guys will create something cool and please share. You can even reply on my uh, YouTube account with your video. That'd be cool. So thanks for watching guys. Subscribe if you like, uh, leave comments um, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.